Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Mattoon, to the special service of worship on Thursday of Holy Week, known through the ages as the New Command Thursday, or Mandate Thursday, or Maundy Thursday. Not Monday Thursday, because that makes no sense. On this night, we remember Jesus' final meal with the disciples before he is arrested and crucified. We remember how he chose to serve his disciples in the humblest way, rather than ask for personal pity or pampering on that fearful yet beautiful evening. The command or mandate that Jesus gave hardly seems new. It is, in fact, very old. It is the command of love. And yet watching how Jesus, God in the flesh, joyfully abandoned his dignity and took the place of a servant gives that commandment new meaning and revelation. Tonight we will once more enter this story, sit at the table with Jesus, humbly watch as he washes feet, and sing our songs of praise with him. We will not be conducting foot or hand washings tonight out of respect for the ongoing pandemic, but we will remember what Jesus did and taught us. We will sit in God's presence together in prayer and in the company of believers. And for all those who wish to participate, we will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion with individual wafers and cups. You do not need to take part in the Holy Meal if you feel uncomfortable, but you are all invited to join in, if you wish, with no condemnation or fear. Let us consider the holiness of this night and how Jesus makes the commandment to love seem ever new. Let us worship God as we speak words from Scripture and offer up an opening prayer together. Our opening sentences and prayer of the day come from Psalm 149, verse 4. The Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. And from Ephesians 4, 31, 32. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Now please join me in prayer. You have given us a new commandment, Lord, that we love one another as you have loved us. God, your love is embodied in Jesus Christ who washed disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal. Wash us from the stain of sin, so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial, and praise him always as Lord and Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn this evening comes from hymn 182, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. As you were able, please stand.
may be seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please take a moment of silence to consider the words of the confessional prayer in your bulletins and to search your own heart. Then after a while, we shall pray together as you feel led. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of mercy, who forgives you all your sins, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for your word given to us through the testimony of the scriptures. Your inspired word. But they are just words on a page unless your Holy Spirit breathes life into us through them. Help us to hear your voice as the scriptures are read tonight. And Lord, may the words of my, our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you because God, you're our hero. You're our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight comes from Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, and 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Our next hymn is number 227. Please stand if you're able for Jesus, Remember Me.
church may be seated. We apologize to those who might be trying to catch us online. It might be difficult. We were having some internet issues today, um, but faster internet is on the way, so we apologize if it's difficult for those who are trying to catch us from out there in the internet land. Our next scripture reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, Jesus said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than, the, than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is God's word for us, God's people. Some people are very concerned about defending God's dignity. Do you know what I mean? Let me explain how I have been too concerned with God's dignity. For instance, I wouldn't dream of tearing up a Bible or vandalizing a picture of Jesus or dressing too sloppy on a Sunday morning or for a worship service. What would people think? What would God think if I did such things? And yet somehow, I'm not as worried about skipping my devotion time every now and then or judging other people or wearing a bad attitude into work. Do I really think that God is more concerned with the external trappings of religion than he is with the human heart? Do I really understand what is most offensive to God? I think I'm still learning, friends. Now, there's nothing wrong, of course, with showing great respect and deference for God by treating the Bible as more than just another book, and I hope that we would temper any urges that we might have to be intentionally offensive to God and God's people, because God is the Lord and absolutely worthy of all praise and honor, but sometimes we might be a little too fearful that we human beings will somehow knock God off God's pedestal somehow if we're not careful about religious things. And when you think about it, isn't that kind of silly? Could we humans ever really knock God out of heaven by some irreverent act of ours? Would some act of disrespect so hurt God's pride 
that God would be done with us and say, that's it, no more, I'm done with humanity forever. Don't we know God better than that? If God were dainty or squeamish or easily offended and so ready to give up on us at any minor infraction, then how on earth do you explain Maundy Thursday and everything that followed? As we read the scriptures and especially tonight's story about Jesus washing his disciples' feet, we realize we cannot knock God off the pedestal because God has already left the pedestal. In love, God descended to our level to be with us. No, not to be sinful like us, but in order to wash our feet and listen to us and cry with us, empathize with us, and serve us, and ultimately save us. God, in the person of Jesus Christ, did not seem to care much about his dignity. He got his hands dirty. He descended to the lowest place. Peter didn't like the sound of that all that much, okay? Peter was kind of a religious guy like we are, right? And so he was very concerned about Jesus' dignity, and he found it out of order for the God of the universe to be serving lowly humans, and especially him. It's like, remember when he first met Jesus? He's like, get away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful person. I have no right to be with you. And what are you doing hanging out with the likes of me? Jesus didn't seem to be all that offended. But when Peter saw the Messiah Jesus, his Lord, suddenly on the ground with a towel wrapped around him, washing his dirty feet. It was just too much. He's like, Lord, this is beneath you. This is beneath you. Jesus responded, No, Peter. This is necessary. As I read these scriptures this week, it occurred to me how wonderfully attentive God is to us. And not just from this gospel story. If you look at that psalm again that Toby read, the poet who is probably David is delighted because he's discovered that God actually listens to him. More than that, that God kind of bends his ear towards humanity. He leans in and he loves us and he helps us and he blesses us with good things. And so it's because of these reasons that David says, I can't believe that you, holy and perfect God, would notice someone like me, a broken, filthy human being. And so, God, you have my trust and my love forever because what God is like you. And he responds with praise and with his vows and with service. Having experienced God's attentive love, David is eager to respond with worship and a life surrendered to his king. Oh, you are so much better, God, than I even thought to imagine. Even my death is precious to you. And I imagine his eyes welling with joyful tears that God would care so much. And God heard that prayer and delighted in David. David was responding appropriately to the goodness of God. Public vows and service dedicated to God is great, but there is a response even better. And it's the response that Jesus wanted to teach his disciples and us on Maundy Thursday. Remember, this will be the very last thing that Jesus teaches his disciples before he is arrested, put on trial, tortured, and killed. Jesus knew that his time was short. The soldiers were on the way. And so there's one final lesson to teach, an important summary of his entire public ministry before the revelation of the cross that was to come. And it's a lesson on love. Jesus is very attentive to the disciples. Notice 
The same God of the Old Testament is the God revealed in Jesus Christ in the New Testament. He is meeting their needs. He is getting down on his hands and knees and washing their feet. And it made Peter uncomfortable. And I bet we understand why, right? If we saw Jesus on the ground in front of us, washing our feet, I think we would probably respond in a similar way. What are you doing? This isn't how it's... I need to be washing your feet. I need to be serving you, not this way. But when Jesus was done with the task, he told them, if I, your Lord and Master, do this for you, then the appropriate response to God's attentiveness is love. And here's the response. I want you to show love to others. Then I'll know that you get it. Then I'll know that you get it. There's much to learn from this incredible story, but a few things came to me that I would like to share with you, the church. The scriptures tell us that Jesus knew that he could do whatever he wanted at this point. It says in the narrative right up to this point, he knew that everything had been delivered over to him. It was his call. His time was up. And he chose, he was going to go back to God. He chose to take the lowest place available to him to show us that nothing is beneath him. And so nothing should be beneath us. Jesus descended low. And this is just the beginning. He would descend even lower later on as he surrendered to the arrest and the humiliation and the cross and even death. Pay attention, Jesus said here on Monday, Thursday, before it all began. I'm going to show you what love looks like so that you also would love for real. There's so much to learn from Jesus, but among the lessons are these. Allow God to serve you. Jesus said, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. So be humble enough to allow God to do the good work in your life. We have to let go of that pride that makes us think that we don't need it. Or that we shouldn't bother the Lord with this. Also, we learn from this. To follow Jesus' example, don't seek to be great. Seek to serve. Peter didn't get it at the time, but he did later. And ultimately, he surrendered his life up for the sake of love. He loved Jesus, and so he fed Jesus' sheep. That was enough for him. It's enough for us. And yes, history remembers Peter's name, but that's because of his association with Jesus. And that's all I want my name to be associated with too. For Jesus is the Lord who made me and you and all good things. His name is worthy. His greatness is shown in humble, excruciating love that changed this world and that even to this day redeems hearts and lives as they put their trust in Rabbi Jesus and his way of humble sacrifice and surrender. We are invited to come to the table again tonight and experience the attentiveness of our God, the God who feeds us, takes care of us, who wraps a towel around his waist to minister to our dirtiness. He makes us clean. He shares a meal with us, with the likes of us. And in response, let's love like he does. That's the response that God wants from us, not just our vows, not just words of praise. He wants us to love others as we love him. That's the old command. That's the new command. That's the mandate for all time. Let's pray. Oh, holy God, 
as we see how you love your disciples and you love us. Let us be likewise inspired to let go of what we think of as high position or reputation and rather find the place of honor washing the feet of others. Because that's where you are, God. That's where we want to be. We love you because you first loved us and you're the one that teaches us how to love. Amen. You may remain seated as we hear our next hymn, number 530, One Bread, One Body. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of It is Jesus that invites us to this table. 
he says, I know that you're carrying a lot of burdens, that you're wearied and worn out and tired and beaten up. So spend some time with me. I can make things all right. My teachings are light and joyful. And so whether you're a Presbyterian or a Baptist or Catholic, it doesn't matter. If you believe that Jesus is the Lord, then you are most welcome. If you're seeking, you are most welcome to participate in this meal with us. If you have an individual uh, cup, I invite you to take that now. They, there are still some in the back if, uh, if you need them. But let me share what has been shared with us. That on the night our Lord Jesus Christ would be betrayed by his closest friends, he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after they had supped together, our Lord took the cup and he said, With this cup I make a new covenant. The forgiveness of sins through the shedding of my blood. Every time you drink this, remember me. For as often as we take this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Lord's death for us. And we anticipate the day that we shall see him face to face, along with all those saints that have gone before us. At this time, I invite you to peel off the top, and we shall take the wafer together. Bread of heaven. And the cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood shed for us. Jesus said, take and drink. Oh God, thank you so much for being here for us tonight and, and indeed every moment of every day. You are just as present. Oh God, you've given us a beautiful example and you've filled us with your Holy Spirit. So help us to respond in gratitude by giving of ourselves. We pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for the many gifts and talents that you have placed within humanity. For Julia's gift for the harp, for Scott's gift for the piano, for our gifts, Lord, to serve and love, to share your good news through our testimonies, the ability to read and to write that allow your scriptures to be shared, the ability to love, Oh, holy God, thank you so much for not leaving us alone down here in the dark, but for coming to be our light and to show us that love is real and that we can have confidence in your love for us and be inspired to serve one another and discover real life there, humbly on, on the place of service. Oh God, you are so good. We love you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Daddy in heaven, your name is holy and known throughout the world. May things on earth become even more like things in heaven, like things are where you are. Please take care of us today and forgive us when we mess up. As we we forgive forgive others others when they mess mess up. up. Please Please don't don't take take us to the places where we are tempted to do evil. Rather, Rather set set us free from from sin and death. death. We know know that that everything, with all its power and glory, belongs to you. And we are yours too, too, forever. As you were able, we invite you to stand. Our closing hymn is number 523, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. Let us worship God.
and share the blood of Christ our Lord. Do not one cup, one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving other in your name, in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come and give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life. In addition to our mu musicians, I'd like to share uh, a special thanks to Brandon Barda for a lot of work that he's been doing throughout this pandemic and tonight to my co-leader here, Toby, and to all of you. You are the worshipers and ministers of this church. Thank you for taking this time to be with us and to be with our Lord Jesus Christ in this fellowship. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. May the Lord beam on you when he sees you. May his his, light, his face light up when he sees you and give you blessing. May the Lord keep you always and may the Lord show us how to live and how to love. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.